Hello everybody, I am going to finally start demonstrating the projects of the Smart Lab Smart Circuits kit. I am tremendously sorry that I have not demonstrated any of the projects. I have been very busy with work, school, and also I've had problems with opening the battery compartment to replace the battery so ultimately I had to force it open. I don't recommend that you do this but I had no other choice and I realized that it may have not been the batteries but the right terminal here was not connecting so I had to connect the wire directly through to the negative terminal even though I was able to insert this wire into the positive terminal like you're supposed to but you insert wires into the terminals like this and usually it doesn't matter which of the three holes of the terminals that you put the wires in but when I put these two wires in these respective terminals the first LED here will glow because I made a complete circuit and electricity has similar properties of water in that it flows just like water and voltage is like water pressure. Voltage measures the pressure in which electricity flows while current measures the strength of the electricity. Just like that. And there are many different electronic components as well. Project two is make it two. I am going to place a third wire in the terminal of the second LED and then put the other end into the positive battery terminal and watch what happens. But now the second LED lights. This is an example of a parallel circuit in which electricity can t has more than one path to flow and each LED in the circuit has its own path. So if I was to unplug one of the LEDs, like the first one, the other will remain on. Unlike a series, if these LEDs were wired in series, then both would go out even if just one failed or was disconnected. Project three is conduct conduction conductance detector. This circuit will allow us to test whether certain items conduct electricity and light up the LED. We're going to touch different items with the end terminals of both the red and green wires that I have in my hand and you'll see that when I put them together when I touch them directly the red LED lights. Now I'm going to put different materials between the two wires. Now this is going to be tricky doing this just one handed so I'm going to try rest the wires on the ground and then first I'm going to try this plastic Lego brick. It's a Lego antenna. Nothing happens because plastic is not a good conductor of electricity so that will not work. Now, let's take these metal scissors and see what they do. These are stainless steel. And because the scissors conduct electricity, the LED should light up. Just like that. Now I'm going to try my own finger. Now, human, the human body is actually a very good conductor of electricity. Water is a great conductor as well, but your body is mostly water, believe it or not. So, although certain parts of your body conduct more, have more moisture than others and therefore conduct electricity better, some do not, like your fingers might, may be less likely to conduct current. I just touched the wires, my body did not actually let the current flow through. Sometimes if you were to make your fingers moist, 
you might be lucky enough to create a current, but the voltage is not strong enough likely. So that would not work. Here are some good examples of items that conduct or insulate electricity. Like a key conducts, some uh, conduct but not very well, and others insulate. Here we have reverse LED. First we would wire the circuit as if we were building project one, but then we are going to switch the polarities of the two wires. I will connect this wire leading from the negative battery terminal to the first LED and the wire leading from the po positive battery terminal to the LED 7. And you'll see that the first LED does not light. That's because LEDs only allow electricity to flow through one way in one direction. With the LED, the red LED is essentially wired in reverse now and therefore it cannot conduct electricity. Such a component is called a semiconductor. Project 5 demonstrates the tricolor LED. One wire will be connected here in this terminal, but then we are going to connect the other wire, the one that leads from the positive battery terminal to terminal one on the tricolor LED, and you will see that a red LED lights, just like the ones on the LED panel in the earlier projects. But now I'm going to remove the wire and reconnect it to terminal two. Now a green LED lights, Lastly, I'm going to connect the wire to terminal 3, and the LED displays a blue light, and it's pretty bright as well on that color. It may look like just one LED, but there's really three smaller LEDs inside this module, each a different color. Project 6 is push button. We have one of the push buttons, there are two included in this kit, wired to the battery and tricolor LED. I'm going to tilt this up so you will see the LED better, but watch when I push my thumb on the button, the red LED comes on. With this button, you have to hold it down in order for electricity to flow through and complete the circuit. And push buttons are common on everyday devices like keyboards, your doorbell, your telephone, and even some light switches have buttons, although they those are meant to leave the circuit on when you release the button and then you have to push it again to turn it off. Project 7 is series push button. We have both push buttons connected and I am going to push the first one, nothing happens. I will then push the second one, again, nothing occurs. But what if I push both buttons at the same time? the red LED will come on and it will only stay on when both buttons are held down. If I release either one, the LED turns off. This is an example of a series circuit. There's only one path for electricity to flow through and therefore any break in the circuit will disable all components. Now, this can be an example of and logic, meaning that you need, if you have two things, to work something, both of them have to be working together to, for that thing to operate. And a good analogy could include if you're wanting to play a game of chess, you, you and a friend would have to play. Neither you nor your friend could play by yourself. Project date is parallel push button. You will see that there are more wires connecting the different components in this circuit, and I am going to push the first push button. You will see that the red LED comes on. When I push the second push button, the red LED also comes on. This is another example of a parallel circuit because this circuit has two separate paths for electricity to flow to light the LED. So if I was to cut open, open up one path, 
there would still be another path for electricity to flow. Electricity will automatically flow through any closed path that is available. This is, could be an example of OR logic, meaning that you just need one thing for something to work out. For instance, if you're playing a video game, you can generally play by yourself. It doesn't matter if you're playing, your friend is playing, or even in m many video games, both you and your friend can play together. Project 9 is varying light levels. I am going to show you this LED, and you can see it's very dim. Now we have the variable resistor included in the circuit, and I am going to slowly turn the knob to the left and watch the LED. It gets brighter once I turn the knob all the way to the left. Then I'm going to turn the knob slowly to the right, and you'll notice that the LED becomes dimmer. That's because the variable resistor can be adjusted to allow a specific amount of current to flow through the circuit. It's kind of like a waterfall set that allows you to regulate how much water comes out at any given time. It regulates the water pressure. This is the same case with the variable resistor, except it is allowing electricity to flow through. And many applications have variable resistors, such as certain light switches, to control the brightness of a lamp or stereo systems to control the volume of sound. Project 10 is tilt switch. We have the tilt switch included in this circuit and I am going to tilt the circuit to the left and you will see that the tricolor LED which is red right now comes on. When I tilt the circuit back to the right the LED turns off. The tilt switch has a very small ball bearing that rolls inside and when it, in this case, rolls to the left, it will close a gap and allow current to flow through the circuit. When I move the circuit to the right, the ball rolls to the right and the gap is open again. So the ball bearing, which is metal, conducts electricity to complete the circuit. A good real life example of a tilt switch would be in a pinball machine or like some sort of sensor that can detect whether players are bumping or nudging the machine too much and trying to cheat. It's okay to bump it a little bit but not too much as to alter the direction which the ball is going. This illustration better explains how the ball bearing closes the gap and allows electricity to flow. The last of the primary projects, 11, is Tone Generator. We're going to use the microprocessor, which is a very small computer that can perform many different tasks. This particular device can perform 40 different ones but for now, I am just going to use this wiring setup, and when I connect the circuit, the microprocessor causes the speaker to produce a flat sound. And then just remove the wire from the positive battery terminal to stop the sound. Microprocessors like this one have an input and an output where information enters and leaves the device respectively. And you can program it or send instructions to the microprocessor so that it will do different tasks. But this is pretty much automatic and you can use different combinations of wires to make different connections and get the microprocessor to do different tasks. There is a very small chip, only about this size, that contains the circuitry for the module. And 
there are different types of memory and components contained in a microprocessor. So it was program this microprocessor was programmed at the factory. And here they explain what happens inside such a device. And now a speaker converts electricity into sound. It's a, tran a transducer which converts electricity into something else.